Hello, hello, my name is Leo and welcome to a new tutorial by Blau Films. Today we will be following up our Synthactic Labyrinth tutorials and we will be looking at how I created this pretty realistic Mars. This has actually been a lot of fun to do. Mars is a planet that we actually have a lot of photographic reference from and every private company seems to be interested in going there. It's definitely a very current planet when it comes to today's zeitgeist. And before we start, let me do a quick rundown of what it is that we will be looking at. First, let's have a look at some references together and then I'll give you some information on the technical specs from the photographs that were taken by NASA. And afterwards, I'm going to show you the setup that I made inside of Cinema 4D and my textures that I created inside of Photoshop. And after that, we'll do some lighting inside of Cinema 4D and that should be it. Now in this pure ref window over here, I have these two photographs of Mars. One of the first things that I noticed is that Mars has a pretty soft saturation. Even though we consider Mars to be the red planet, we can't really say it's red, right? It's the values we should be aiming for are going to be somewhere in the mid range of saturation. Now one of the things that I noticed as well is if you look at these photographs, we're not getting any overexposed values. Now this is actually very difficult when it comes to photographing planets because planets tend to get overexposed pretty quickly. Especially if you look at something like the white rings of Saturn or a planet like Venus which is almost just a overexposed bright star. If you have something like the sun that is so strong shining straight out of the planet, it's very difficult to be able to get such a balanced exposure. Now I did a little bit of research when it comes to how these Mars photographs were actually taken. They use a telescope camera hybrid system called the High Rise. This system, as you can see, it's a massive thing and it uses a, I believe it's like a 12 or more sensor grid that then receives the light that is being taken in by this massive telescopic lens. And this high rise is on a orbiter that is constantly floating around Mars. Now I found some information saying that it's about 250 kilometers away from Mars and that it's moving at a 4000 meters per second speed meaning that they need to have a very fast shutter speed to be able to have a picture come out clearly without any noticeable motion blur. Now, it's actually very funny when you think about it, and something as big as a planet wouldn't be something that comes to my mind immediately as something that would be getting any motion blur. Now, there are some other things that are quite interesting from the high-rise system. I was struggling a little bit with figuring out what kind of a focal length this telescopic system would have. And I found an article stating that it has a focal length of 12 meters, which would be a 12,000 millimeter lens. Now, this isn't something that sounds normal. But if you think about it, if the planet is 250 kilometers away and you are trying to get a high resolution map for the surface of the planet, you would need to have such a long lens to be able to capture different sections of the planet that then in post are being stitched together by the people at NASA back on Earth, creating the full 360 of the planet. Now, for us, that isn't completely relevant. The only thing that I could tell from this is that these photographs are taken on, generally speaking, a very long lens. I've decided to keep somewhat of a similar ratio because I am also scaling down the planet when it comes to kilometers to centimeters. I'm giving our camera a focal length of 1200 millimeter and that would be at least somewhere in the range of these absurd long values. Now calculating the f-stop is something that's also slightly difficult. Luckily I found two different articles that were stating different values unfortunately, but they were giving us a range between f17 and f24, which means we have a basically almost completely closed down aperture 
to give us the sharpest image possible. Now a few more things about Mars before we dive into the textures. It is a planet with a radius of 3389.5 kilometers, which I have converted to 3389.5 centimeters. It has a tilted axis of 25 degrees. It has an atmosphere with more than 95% of carbon dioxide. And as we've spoken about in the tutorials for planet Earth and Saturn and even the Jupiter tutorial, different atmospheres made up of different compositions will create different absorption levels and transmission levels. Now, you can basically just find this on a chart anywhere online, but CO2 primarily absorbs radiation in the mid and and far infrared portions of the spectrum meaning that it would scatter the opposite of what it's absorbing. It would be scattering between the ultraviolet all the way to the yellow spectrum and it would be absorbing from the yellow all the way to the infrared spectrum. The atmosphere of Mars is actually a hundred times thinner than that of Earth. It has a thickness of 10.8 kilometers which I have again converted to 10.8 centimeters. The highest point on the surface of Mars is Mount Olympus at 21 kilometers and the lowest point of Mars is the Hellas Crater at 7.2 kilometers deep. And that should be about everything we need to know about Mars before we can start getting into making this thing. Now right now we're gonna go into the textures and I'm jumping into Photoshop. Cool. And as you can see, this is the unwrapped diffuse channel for Mars. Personally, I find it very difficult to find high resolution enough images of different planets. I know that everything should be available on the NASA website. And NASA has a very deep register with a bunch of image textures that are free for you to use. But I wasn't able to find any nicely unwrapped high resolution texture for Mars. I did, however, find this one on a website that I will leave in the description below. And it's a 8K Mars diffuse texture. Now, there is no other texture except for this diffuse channel. And we'll have to make our normal map and our glossiness map ourselves. So, the first thing I did is I imported this texture into Photoshop. And if you select the texture, the only thing you have to do is go up here to filter and then go to 3D. And then you have these two options, generate bump map or generate normal map. Now you can go for either way. I generally prefer normal maps as they give me a little bit more control over the height displacement. But as you can see, if I click on that generate normal map, this window pops up in the background. You can already see the preview of the normal map. And here you can play around with the low, medium, and high values to really get the look that you desire. Now it has saved the settings that I've been using. I have a blur of 0.5 and a detail scale of just above 110. And I believe I've lowered the low to 5%. I think it was about like 7 or 8% before. And then you just hit OK. I will hit cancel now as I have my normal map right here. The only thing I did then is I went to File, Save As, and I saved it as Mars, 8K Mars Normal. Now, the next thing I did is I duplicated this layer again, and I turned it into a bump map. Now, the reason why I wanted a bump map is I wanted to turn this bump map into a displacement channel. Now, the way that I did that is I went down here and I created a new adjustment layer, and I made it a curves adjustment. As you can see, if I create a new adjustment layer right next to it, it has a white square, which is the layer mask. And if you have that layer mask selected and you go up here to image, you can hit this apply image option. And what it does is it basically projects whatever you have on the screen right now onto that alpha mask as a black and white layer. And what we have now is we have a curves adjustment layer that is going to primarily be affecting the white areas. And as it goes down to black, the less of an effect it will be having. So what we can do is we can then very selectively lower these pole caps and kind of bring them down to a mid level. And the reason we want to be doing that is displacement maps, they work with luminance values. And I don't want any of this pole cap to be extruding out into the sky as if it's supposedly like 30 kilometers high. 
I want them to be in the same mid range as all these other values. And then afterwards, I want to create a levels adjustment that will simply crush down the white values to be perfectly white and the black values to be perfectly black. That way, once we get this into our texture slot, we will be able to define that pure white is the height of Mount Olympus and that pure black is the depths of the Hellas crater. Now, the one thing that I notice is the resolution of this map that we have here is creating a little bit of stepping. And that stepping is something that I find very unfortunate, but I've decided to keep it for this video. Because in a way, it kind of gives off that mountainy quarry feeling. I will, however, be looking around if I can find any higher resolution maps so I can get a more accurate displacement map out of it. And if anyone in the comments knows where to find higher resolution maps for Mars, please let me know. I will thank you forever. I'll pin your comment up here so everyone else will be able to see it. The next thing I did is I wanted to create a glossiness map or a roughness channel if you invert it. I made a new layer and then I hit G for the paint bucket and I gave it a color of 40% on the black value meaning it's about 60% gray or 40% gray, depending on if you're reading it from top to bottom or from bottom to top. And I filled that layer, here you go. Then I turned on my bump channel and I lowered the bump's opacity to be about 60%. Now the next thing I did is I turned on that curves adjustment and that's about it. This should be the glossiness map that we can use for Mars. Almost everything is around the 50 to 60% gray values. You don't want to be going any higher than that because a planet like Mars is basically just a bunch of dusty rock. You don't want it to be reflecting. You don't want it to have any sharp highlights. You want it to make very matte and very opaque, but you don't want to be taking it too far down because that's when it will start looking like it's not rock anymore and will just start looking like fabric or I don't know, something like that. I've exported all four of these maps and I guess it's time for us to go into Cinema 4D. So here we go. We're in Cinema 4D. Now, first of all, like to say you can do this in any 3D package you have. It really doesn't matter. I'm using Cinema 4D and my render engine of choice is Corona Renderer. I like it because of its reliability, but if you're using Redshift or Octane or Arnold or V-Ray or whatever it is, go for it. You can do the same things. Now, if you look around at my scene, on the right corner over here, you can see I have two objects, namely Mars and Atmosphere. I have a sunlight and I have three cameras. If you look down here, my materials, I have a material for Mars, I have a atmosphere material, and then I have a layered material and some water because I actually did a little test where I filled up all the craters with a water material and that actually looked pretty interesting, giving us some pretty crazy results. So I created a sphere and I gave it a radius of 3,389.5 centimeters and I gave it about 400 segments. You want to give the resolution of your planets a pretty good amount of polygons because once you start displacing all of this stuff, you want to be able to maintain as much detail as you can. Now the next thing I did is I actually rotated the planet to be about 25 degrees off and then I clicked on this thing over here and I rotated my anchor point to go back to its original position. That way we have a 25 degree tilted axis for our planet. Just going step by step trying to match as many of the physically accurate things we know about the planet. Now the next thing I did is I duplicated that model and I just added 10.8 centimeters to the radius. Now the difference, if you look from the top view over here, this is Mars and this is the atmosphere. The difference is very subtle. It's just 10 centimeters, but that's the thickness proportionally of the atmosphere. Cool. Let's turn on the interactive renderer and we'll be able to have a more interesting view in this tutorial. Cool. So let's first have a look at the material, then we'll do the camera settings and then we'll start playing with the light. The material is just very simple. 
I've just imported all the correct maps into their correct channel. We have the diffuse map into the diffuse channel. As a reflection, I have the roughness map inside of the glossiness texture, and I have the Fresnel IOR set to 1.6. It's just a very default setting when it comes to Corona Renderer. You, in whatever render engine you're using, just use the default Fresnel IOR. Inside of the bump channel, I created a normal texture, and inside of there, I added my normal map. Now, I am working with a sRGB color profile, so make sure to change your color profile to whatever it is you're working with. And I set the bump strength to 50%. Finally, I have my displacement map set inside of the displacement texture. I have the minimum level set to negative 7.2 centimeters and the maximum level set to 21 centimeters, matching the height and the depth of Mars. Now, the next thing we have is this atmosphere texture. You'll have to figure out in your render engine what kind of a volume material you'll be able to create, because that's basically what I've been using for these atmospheres. Down here, you can go to Corona and volume material, and the material looks like this. It's, um, you have a absorption color and you have a scattering color. Now, for the absorption color, I've created a gradient down here. And inside of that gradient, what I did is I just changed my color picker mode to Kelvin to have color temperature. And then I set the left color node to 1000 and I set the right color node to be exactly in the middle of this color spectrum. So we have about 5,500. Basically we're telling Corona Renderer to get all the mid range all the way to infrared frequencies of light and just absorb those. Now we need something to be scattered on the other side. Under texture, select a Fresnel. The Fresnel is defined by a gradient. A standard Fresnel gradient goes from white to black, meaning that the center is more visible and the edges have a fall off or invertedly. The way we can play around with that is if you give a black value on the beginning and on the end, you will create a fall off right at the edge of the planet and right in the center of the planet. And the values in between can be the color that you want to be scattered. Now we want to be scattering anything on the lower range of the spectrum. As we have photographic reference of what Mars looks like at night and we can clearly see these blue shades. Now, when I did the Planet Earth tutorial, I actually went through the crazy trouble of waiting until like 5 in the morning at a clear summer night, and then I took a long exposure raw photograph of the sun just coming up, just looking, photographing the atmosphere of our planet, but then, you know, looking from Earth. I've actually made that image available for free on our ArtStation store, so there will be a link in the description below to that as well. Be sure to go there, download it, and you know, check out all the other stuff we've got. Let's move on to some of these numbers over here. Now, the rule of thumb that I usually stick to for planets is make your distance about a third or a fourth of the radius of your planet. So we have a 3,300, 3,400 radius of Mars. So 1,300 gave me a pretty nice result, a very soft, but still a little bit present atmosphere. For the directionality, I gave it a 0.4. I can actually show you what kind of a result you get with directionality. If I lower the directionality down to zero, you'll be able to see in the interactive viewport that we're actually getting some of that atmosphere while looking straight ahead at our planet. And if I bump up that all the way to 0.99, we have almost completely excluded the atmosphere from our view. I didn't enjoy the presence of the atmosphere at zero, and somewhere around the 0.3 or 0.4 is a pretty natural value. If you look at any of these references, you can see that the atmosphere is visible from the front, but it's very faint and it's almost just a hint of color on the edges. Cool, that's everything for the textures. Now let's have a look at our light setup. So I've created a Corona Sun. This could be a infinite light in standard Cinema 4D or any kind of sunlight in any render engine. 
usually I have that sun set to a small size of either one or two. I was playing around with a larger source for some creative purposes, but generally speaking, stick to a small light source when it comes to the sun. You want these harsh shadows for when a planet is in the dark side. I have an intensity bumped up to 15. This is something that you will have to be playing around with yourself once you have set up your camera settings, as those are the ones that are basically defining how intense your light should be. For temperature, I've set it to 6000 Kelvin, a very clean white light, which is what you would be getting in space where the sun has no atmosphere or no interference that would scatter the wavelength. If I move around the light, you'll be able to see what kind of happens. If I just give it a little bit of a shadow, you will be able to start seeing that we get some of that blue atmosphere interacting with the edges of the planet. And you can also see our displacement and normal maps doing their job. We are able to see the sun hitting some of the areas in the shadowy parts, the ones that are a bit taller, and we're creating these very interestingly defined shadows down here. Yeah, there you go. There you go. We're seeing some of that blue atmosphere coming down at the bottom. We have these very nice looking mountains and rocky cliffs on the edge, especially when the sun is passing over it, you'll be able to see it interacting very nicely. Let's give this planet a little bit more light and then let's go into the camera settings. So I've created the camera and I've given it a focal length of 1200 millimeters. I have this Corona camera tag that has all of our settings. I have first checked use photographic exposure, which then overrides whatever camera settings you had previously. And I have a ISO of 200, which if Eric, our DOP is seeing this, he probably suggests me to go for an 800. But the shutter speed on Corona Renderer isn't able to go any faster than one over a thousand seconds. Now, one of the things that I found online is that one over a thousand seconds is actually the slowest shutter speed on the high-rise telescopic system. And their standard shutter speed would be somewhere around one over 13,000th of a second. It's just a ridiculously fast shutter speed that, unfortunately, Corona Renderer doesn't have the ability to do. So, if that's the case, lower your ISO, lower your exposure, try to mess around with it some other way, or I guess lower the sun intensity if that's kind of the, the last resort you have. Then we have an f-stop of 17, which in other situations could be 24. And finally, I have tone mapping set up with uh, just a highlight compression of 1. I have the bloom and glare turned on with the default settings, even though we're not really getting any bloom and glare. It's just, you know, it's just kind of giving it a little bit more of a hazy, blendy look. Um, finally, I have the sharpening turn on, the depth of field is turned on, and I have the bokeh center bias set to 1, bokeh vignetting set to negative 1, and the bokeh anisotropy set to 0 0.5. Cool, so I guess that's about it, right? That's Mars is a pretty straightforward planet. Now, let's play around a little bit with the lighting. If I... let's see, let's turn the entire planet around. And let's have a look at it from the other side. So I'm selecting both and I'm just going to be rotating it. And now we are looking at the large bright desert on the opposite side of the planet. What I will do now is I'm going to try to give it a little bit of a cinematic top lighting. There you go. I took that angle up to 90 degrees and the rotation to about 270. And now we are shining that light all the way from the top. Now, this is looking very cinematic. This is what I was trying out before. If you increase the size of your light, what you will be getting is a much softer fall off of this shadow. So have a look at this. Now, this is actually as inaccurate as you could possibly make a planet, right? A planet, generally speaking, doesn't have any soft fall off. But at least you know that sometimes, in some situations, it can actually be more cinematic to have a softer falloff. 
if I completely place the planet in shadow, that's when we can really play around with that atmosphere. It's very beautiful blue halo that we're getting around the planet, and it's very subtle, it's very subtle, especially because the atmosphere is so thin and so small in comparison to the planet itself. I think you can get some pretty amazing results with this. Now, let me see, what else can we do? Let me give it a bit more light from the bottom. I'm going to quickly zoom out a bit. Now, as you can see up here, we're getting these very nice details. Cool, cool, cool. And I think that's about it. Now, finally, I would like to show you what I did with this layered material over here. I'm just going to apply that and you'll see what happens. Here you go, here you go. So as you can see, it's a very strange result, but one of the things I was thinking about is if we go back into Photoshop for a quick second, I have this bump channel. Now, what I can do is I can invert that bump channel with Command-I and then use a levels adjustment to really crunch it down. Essentially, we just get the dark areas. Essentially, we just get the areas that in our displacement map are the craters. So what you can do then to create an effect similar to this, or, you know, you could make it with any kind of texture. You could even apply a gold texture to this, for example. You create a duplicate of your material, and I've excluded all the textures except for the normal map channel. And I have a reflection of 1.6 with a glossiness of 0.8. I turned on refraction with a 0.33 water index. I have thin turned on for no refraction as no refraction actually ended up working better. And I have enabled the dispersion with a ABBA number of 15, which is pretty refractive actually. Then I have the normal channel set to the same and I turned on volumetrics with volumetric scattering. I have an absorption color of yellow and a scattering color of blue. The directionality is set to 0 0.3 and I have a pretty large distance, kind of covering the entire um, diameter of the planet. And then I created this Corona layered material. And as you look on the side over here, I have my base material set to the Mars material. And then I have the water material set to this material one slot with the alpha we made in Photoshop set as the mask. And what that does is because we have no displacement turned on inside of this water material, it never goes down where the craters go and it never goes up where the mountains go, meaning we have a perfectly level sphere all around that's the same size as our Mars sphere. There you go, you can have an ocean, you can add anything. And for the sake of good measure, if I create a new material and I go turn off the diffuse channel, turn on the reflection channel, give it a IOR of 99, then I'm going to load a material, I'm just going to say metal, and I've got this roughness texture over here of some kind of damaged metal. And inside of there, I'm going to invert the black and white points, and I'm going to increase the exposure a little bit. There you go. I'm going to lower the anisotropy to be around 0.2, and let's then go in here and copy the normal channel paste it in here and give it a value of 50. Perfect. And now if I go into my layered material and I swap that one out, look at what we get. And there we go. We have a silver reflecting ocean right inside of Mars. Now this of course looks absolutely ridiculous, but you are able to use these kind of techniques of just alphaing out a certain section of a displacement map and then playing around with levels in between your displacement to create these pretty funky results. And even though this is probably not usable for anything except for just R&D, it's nice that you are able to do these kind of things and, you know, just play around and, you know, maybe you have a fun thing to post on ArtStation or maybe you can come up with some very funky original planets. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. We are trying to reach those 1,000 subscribers sometime soon. We have been going much faster with the views and comments and subscribers on this channel. I'm very happy to see everyone sticking around. 
We are very busy at Blau Films with finishing our sci-fi film Syntactic Labyrinths. There are many very talented artists involved in this project and I'm very excited to share their knowledge with you and to share the final film once it's done. So please stay tuned, click that subscribe button and you'll be able to stay up to date. Now, before we go, I would like to have a quick look at our ArtStation page, or my personal ArtStation page, I guess. If you go down here to store, you'll be able to see all of our products we have. We have a bunch of free products as well, like the CRT TV diodes, realistic moon phases. These are, I guess, more related to what we're doing now, but they're basically, I've created a realistic moon and I've exported 360 one degree angle variations of uh, 2k exr files so if you're doing some kind of matte painting compositing day for night kind of shot it's a very easy thing for you to just go inside of this folder get the moon asset in the correct phase you want drag it in there and just get it composited i do actually have a tutorial on this youtube channel talking about how to correctly composite your moon in your shot we have a bunch of matte painting and compositing assets. We have some decals, packs, and, and there's some more stuff coming soon. You know, have a look, check it out. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day, have a great night, and talk to you soon. Cheers, bye-bye.